Hello everyone, back for another doll video, and today I'm going to be showing you an American Girl doll that I made over, I don't even remember, I don't even know if I did a video of her at all, but she was one that I found at the thrift store some time ago for around four or five dollars. So she was a nude doll, so she was nude. And she didn't have any of her accessories, nothing. And she had the front part of her hair cut. So fortunately I had some, um, I had some hair wefts from a hair piece that I had found at the thrift store as well a long, long, long time ago. And yes, I did wash the hair thoroughly. It was synthetic hair. So I actually used the wefts from that on this doll which is what I've heard is Ruthie so her name is Ruthie so here she is so yeah as you can see the difference in the hair but yeah she has brown and there's like it looks like there's auburn streaks in there like I don't even know if you'll be able to tell really but it's like a dusty sort of brown, at least that's what it's showing up on camera. And then in there, there's some like little auburn streaks. And that's kind of what's going on with the hair pieces that I, or the wefts that I stitched on. So I wound up stitching some wefts on to the wig. I cut the hair off as short as it would go because it was still a little bit long um there was still a little tiny bit of length to it i guess like these shorter pieces right here that you can see that's the that's some of the shorter pieces from the wefts that i glued on or uh, stitched on and that's like how short the hair was cut so so yeah, I just cut it off the rest of the way like you would when you're rerouting a Barbie or something. I just cut it off to the scalp as short as I could get it and then I stitched new hair on. So I did have to pull her wig up for that. Um, so yeah, you can kind of see where I went in and stitched the wefts on. So yeah, it, it stops like right there, but I did, I had to, uh, stitch some new hair on. Maybe someday I will customize her. I don't know. I've never customized one of these before, but maybe I would, maybe I could get another wig for her and just create my own unique character. I don't know, but yeah, I did have to stitch a lot of the hair on, so... Now I'm just going to see about going through the process of gluing all this back down again. So what I was doing, and this is literally my first time trying to do this. So I'll just put the doll right there. Yeah, I've got my super glue out. I was gluing together some other dolls. So I have this Halloween charm Barbie that I got when she first came out in 2007. Yeah. And this isn't even her body. Her original body broke. And I didn't exactly know how to fix that properly. So this was a city style Barbie from like 2006 or something. And so I, it's basically the exact same body that she had. I don't even have her original boots anymore, so I put these on her. I recently glued that star back on there. But yeah, her neck was so, so busted. So I'm waiting for the glue to dry. And her neck was broken and, like, trying to chip in front and back. So there was, like, cracks everywhere. So yeah, I've been working on her. See so yeah, how she's got, like, purple lips. I didn't even know at the time, but I kind of got a wonky-eyed one, so 
probably try to get another one at some point. Um, I'm looking for my, oh, there it is. So I'm gonna need a nail file. Again, I, I was also working on this doll, so. Um, I got her last night and um, I actually altered her to where she could have healed feet. Because I absolutely despised the shoes that she was wearing. So this is Barbie Fashionista 202. So as you can see, I did make her have healed feet. Kind of, sort of. It's not the most professional looking um, alteration I've done to a doll. But now... Yeah, I have this curvy Barbie totally hair doll and watch this now I can take the shoes off of her and put them on her it was a bit of an ordeal doing this um I had to like like first I just went in for it and I just like bent her feet downward. A lot of brute force went into doing this, but yeah, she can now wear heels. It was quite hard. I, I was just gonna leave her feet the way they were, but I could not find her another pair of shoes for the life of me. And you know, currently I have her wearing these little flats but they were actually designed for like slightly healed feet so so yeah even she couldn't even wear these without it looking weird so I was having a very hard difficult time trying to find her some shoes so yeah but and I also how I did her hands her hands were like straight down but I put her hands in some boiling water and then I pushed them outward and rinsed them under the cold water and they stuck like that. I wanted to kind of do her pinky. So like maybe I could have like had her pinky out like that to make her hands a little more graceful, but I didn't do that. I just did the whole, um, yeah, her hands were basically like this. You see how her hand more or less goes like straight down. And then, see the original curvy dolls and all the other Barbies around when these were first being produced, like different body types and everything, they had them molded to where their hands went out, like a lot of Barbies have had for many years. But eventually they made the, the, the pose of the hands really boring and flat. So I wanted them to be out. I wanted them to look more dainty. So that is how I did that. So she's got more graceful posed hands. And she's got feet that can wear heels now. I'm still going to keep her in these little... It's like early 2000s Barbie shoes. They came from like Wish or something. So they are like a cloned shoe mold. So these aren't actually from the 2000s. They're new, but this is an old sculpt, shoe sculpt. So, But I kind of like to have her wear those. So, so that is her for now. I actually went through and I, my doll accessories and I found her a little like water bottle it's a pink water bottle i'll probably just do a full-on review over her i want to go get another one because this doll is on clearance at walmart for like five dollars so i want to get another one because she's really amazing but no i got her water bottle i found her a pair of like sunglasses that she can wear that went to a beach glam Teresa doll from 2006 and then another like AliExpress wish sort of accessory was a visor. Um, it's like a hot pink visor. I think that's what they're called. It's like 
the um it looks like a um oh god like you have a baseball cap but it doesn't have the top to it it's just like a headband with the front on it so yeah so I found one of those I wanted to put her in some like rollerblades but they wouldn't fit so I mean how cool would rollerblades have been with or even roller skates been with this outfit I mean come on she would I had her looking so 80s earlier and I wanted her to uh wear some rollerblades or something but whatevs so I put her shoes back on one so yeah it her feet aren't going to look as professionally done it's not gonna look like she was actually her feet were actually molded that way so we'll do a little comparison so this one is a curvy that actually comes with slightly arched feet and this is what I did so yeah I tried sanding it down a little bit to get rid of the bump it just takes some working at it but it's not gonna look as perfect as that so so yeah that is that but she can wear other shoes now she has more options to wear shoes so yeah, I just thought I'd show you guys some other little things that I've been working on. I'm going to put all their shoes back on. And she can even wear her original shoes. It's just like what we dealt with in the 90s and the 2000s. Or even when the Barbies wore flat shoes. They would still be walking around on their tippy toes. But I don't really care. So here's her original shoes back on so yeah her feet are more pointed now and if you put boots on her it definitely hides the bump at the ankle a little bit better so yeah this was a little a lot of working at it and um, I did it to one other pair of Barbie legs it was just a standard it wasn't to like a curvy or petite or tall doll it was just to a standard Barbie type of leg so but yeah, I'm not keeping her in those shoes. That was the whole reason I wanted to change her foot shape or whatever her ankle shape in the first place is so she could wear something else. Because I do not like those shoes on her. They don't go with anything. So yeah, I might do a full-on review over her and do like a little accessorizing of her to show you what all I came up with. So, but for now she has more options for shoes. So I'll probably see if I can't make a video of how I did that. It was very complicated. So, but for now we're gonna work on this doll, this American girl doll. So what I'm gonna do is actually sand her original glue for when I glue this back down because if I just glue it on there the glue might slip off again and I don't want that so this is going to create a rough edge and I'm only sanding on this line of where the glue I'm only sanding on the original glue I don't know what they used originally but I sanded this part already so and there we go and that's all you need to do so now I'm gonna get my glue I don't have any gel glue I'm gonna try to use this if it messes up then that's you know lesson learned this is literally my first ever time doing this so but she needed new hair so this is the first time I ever pulled up an American Girl Dolls wig my original one which was Nikki Nikki Fleming um I remember being scared to even wash her hair because I thought her wig would just come unglued and 
all the American Girl videos that I had seen. Like literally that day that I, because I literally looked up that day, I looked up American Girl videos, like how to wash them and stuff like that. And uh, all of them said, oh, don't get the wig cap wet or like the, uh, the wig scalp or whatever, because it can loosen up the glue. It took a, a little bit of force to get this off, I will say. So it's not as delicate as everyone makes it out to be. And these dolls are mainly made for little children. They're more at a collector quality, but they're definitely more geared towards children like that's the audience that the company is trying to appeal to so if you're going to be making wigged dolls for children you definitely want to make sure that they can't come loose so i'm just going to go with my super glue All right there. Okay. And yeah, from Selena's Glamorous Dolls channel, I've seen her do this so many times, so it should just come natural at this point. But this is not American Girl hair that I put on, so I have no idea how it is going to react to the glue. So, I'm just going to try to hold that the best that I can. And hope that the glue takes to it. Okay. And it seems like it might have. Okay. Yeah, it's not really pulling up. Like, I've never done this before, so this is new territory for me. Okay, so I already sanded that. Yeah, you can still kind of see where the original hair was cut. So yeah, that all was cut right there. But yeah, I'm just going to glue this all back down and call it good. So yeah. Don't really want to be looking at the camera right now because I need to focus on this. Okay. Now pull this down like that. Yeah, the problem with the regular super glue is it can stick to you because it gets a little bit runny. just takes time and of course after I'm done the hair that I rooted in or not rooted in but stitched on to the the actual wig it's really silky so it's kind of hard to uh, but yeah it's not curled like her original hair is like her original hair has a defined curl at the end so i will have to go in and curl that 
So yeah. So I feel like I want to get under there a little bit more. Because I want to be sure that this isn't going to come up again unless I want it to. Yeah, this is so weird the first time doing this. Okay. Put a little right there. I'm gonna try to push that down. I wasn't expecting super glue to work this well. I thought you would have needed to use some sort of high quality adhesive or something like that, but no. This is really, really working. I mean, it probably helps that I also sanded the original glue down in the original area. It's like I'm really gonna press that. Because I do want to make sure that this does not come off. Again, unless I want it to, which then I'm gonna like really have to rip her wig off if I wanted to switch it. Okay. It's hard to know when to stop pushing it down, like when it's, it's hard to know when, for you to know when it's good, when it's, you know, it's hard to know when it's actually down, when it's actually glued. But this is all new territory for me, so, but I'm amazed that it's working. Yeah, I wish I could have uh, done a video of me stitching it in, but it was just such an awkward. Um, I don't know how well I would have been able to film it. It was just a lot of the um, positions I had the doll in and all that. I feel like my hands would have been in the way and you wouldn't have been able to see. So, yeah. Um, but. That is pretty much on. And I'm pulling on it and it's not coming up. So, I think she's good to go. at that. Now she's got kind of like a hairline. What? So now I can actually start like styling her hair and actually playing with her and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, that's that pretty much. She is done. I'm pretty much done with the restoration on her. That was like the last thing I needed. Well, not completely done. I still have to curl her hair, but as far as like getting her back together, like getting her new hair stitched on and getting her wig glued back down and all that and everything, that's pretty much it. Yeah, it is a little bit bulky where I stitch the wefts on because she's already got like hair there. She was interesting, like they did. Let me see if I can find, like I'd never seen this before. Yeah, you know, it was like right where they cut it off, it looked like they rooted hair into that part of the wig. It was so weird. 
Kind of like a wig that I have. I don't know. It was really interesting, like, how the hair was put in. But I cut all that hair off so that I could... I cut all the excess off so that I could stitch this on, so... I can't find it anymore. Um, but yeah, that's why it's bulky, is because I'm sure they have other tracks on under this. And I didn't take the tracks off. I just left some and then I stitched this on over it, so... But, you know, I still want to go in with, like, a flat iron and, like, press this down so it's as flat as it can be. Because I stitched one on, folded it over, and then I stitched the other one on on top of it and folded that over. So, it's a little bulky there, so I want to, like, try to get a flat iron. This is, like flat iron, curling iron, like heat safe hair. So you can actually use a curling iron, a flat iron on it. And you can with regular American Girl hair as well. But it's just best to do it with like water. So yeah. But I want to get a uh, flat iron on this to like push it down more so it's not sticking up so much. But yeah. And that's her eye color. You can like barely see but they're like a grayish, greenish color. So yeah. So anyway, that is that. And yeah, her hair is on. It's on there. Wait. It's not going nowhere. So now she can be washed and played with and brushed and styled and all that stuff. So yeah once i get her new hair and yeah it does have somewhat of a curl to it her new hair does i think it's because like i i did boil wash this hair before i washed it and conditioned it and boil washed it before i um stitched it onto her wig so hair like especially synthetic hair is very sensitive after you boil wash it so like if you boil wash hair and you leave it doll hair and you leave it in a position for too long right after you boil washed it and then you pick the doll back up the hair will have like kinks in it from whatever position you had the doll's hair laying in or whatever and so this hair, I mixed it in with her existing hair right afterward and like combed it in to her original curls. So I think it kind of like shaped, this side at least, shaped to her, her actual curls. So I might not have to do anything to that. But this side over here is still kind of straightish. So I'm going to have to curl that. So but I can just use my curling iron for that because the hair that I used is curling iron safe so so yeah all in all she is my third normal like regular size American Girl doll I have three of these I have two minis which is Sage and Julie so I have a mini Sage and Julie and then I have Camille, which is a Welly Wisher. So I have six American Girl dolls all together. So, and she was my most recent one. And pretty much all of them I found at thrift stores. All of them. All of them I got from thrift stores. So, so yeah. I mean, I would love to be able to get one new and be able to, like, experience taking the hairnet off and stuff like that. So. So, yeah. One thing I like to do with these, like, blinky-eyed dolls is I like to just make their eyes open and close. Because it's like their eyes actually do something, so I kind of like to uh, make them blink 
by doing that. I like the sound that the eyes make too. So, and yeah, I was doing that with another doll. Let me see if I can get her. I've got a bunch of stuff over here that I'm trying not to knock over. But yeah, I have my Chrissy. Another one of my favorite dolls, but I like to do that with her. Yeah, the one thing I don't like about Chrissy is her eye color. Like, it's just black. There's no detail in there. It's just solid black. There's no pupil. There's no iris detail. They just literally molded her eye out of black plastic and then painted the white, white part of the eyes on and then the lid, and that was it. So, yeah, her original eyes are meh. They're kind of boring, <laughs> honestly, because they didn't do any details. But, yeah, one of my favorite things about blinky-eyed dolls, like sleep-eyed dolls, is that they uh, I like to make them blink, and I like to make their eyes make that noise. So, yeah. And she's got her original dress on, original underwear. I don't have any shoes for her. And then this is her hair. Someone once asked me, like, why the hair on these is short. And that's because that was, like, the style back then. So, like, when you had the long hair, it would, like, be long all back here. And then you would have, like, the short parts in the front that you would, like, curl and things like that. It would be kind of like shaggy in the front and then see the ponytail is meant to like cover all the back but you want the hair short originally so that when you reel the hair in it blends and actually looks like she has like she had her hair cut so that you don't actually have to cut the doll's hair in fact i guess i could demonstrate that really fast just because I want to so yeah so you have your doll there's a belly button in front and then you push the belly button in I kind of like to I mean yeah, so you have the knob, but like you're, apparently you're supposed to push the belly button so it comes out. So when you reel it in, it does it really smoothly, but I kind of like the noise that it makes when you turn it. So you turn it clockwise. And so now her hair is short. It will stick up, though, unfortunately. But see how it blends in with her short hair now. Yep. So it will literally look like she got a haircut without actually cutting her hair. So now she has a little short hairstyle. Yep. And then all you do to get the hair long again as you push the belly button like so and then you pull on the hair and it comes back out again just like so but yeah the commercials for these dolls always advertises the ponytail portion Sorry, her hair is not showing up nearly as vibrant as it is in person. Like, her hair is, like, really red. It's Her hair on camera looks more like... They also have a variant called a brownette Chrissy, and that's kind of what it's showing up as on camera. The brownette is more of a brownish color, and it's a little more dull. But her hair actually is, like, super vibrant in person, so... But yeah, the hair, the commercials advertise the ponytail portion as being thick enough to where it can cover all this up. But I've seen some Chrissy dolls with some pretty thin ponytails and 
yeah but there's supposed to be enough to be able to cover up all the short hair in the back so that it looks long and that they just have the uh, the shag haircut in the front and I think it looks really cute love these dolls face sculpts Chrissy's face mold is my favorite of course because she has a super bright happy smile I just love her sculpt her face mold is amazing and I like the way the legs are sculpted she's very leggy and the hands are very graceful looking I did paint her nails but it's coming off so yeah, but very graceful hands. Um, what other dolls do I have? Oh yeah. And then we have the little cousin. Somebody, some people think it's her, um, her little sister, but no, they're cousins. This is one that I rerouted and I replaced her ponytail and I curled her hair. And I did a custom eye color on her. So this is velvet. And so yeah, I popped her eyes out because she was missing lashes. So I replaced the lashes on this eye and I colored her eyes this maroonish. Um, sort of plum almost plum color you can still see some remnants of her original like lavender eyes but her eyes were so faded so I when I popped her eyes out I took the eyes apart and basically to do the eye color all they did was they painted the backing of the eye that color but of course it faded so I went in with some nail polish remover and I removed as much paint original paint as I could but you can still see some of the original lavender paint on the bottom. But I think it creates a cool effect. Like, um, it's some extra little iris detail. So yeah, I painted the pupil back in there with black acrylic. And then I went over it with some nail polish. Some maroon colored nail polish. And that is how she got her eye color. Yeah, you can see a lot more of the... Um, lavender paint still in there. I couldn't get it all out, but whatever. And then I rerouted her hair and curled it. And I replaced her ponytail. This one's actually the look around velvet. Ah, uh, she does the thing that I like. Like what Barbie legs do sometimes because she has a this more like solid plastic body. Yeah, she's squeaky and I'm obsessed with that. So yeah, but she has curls. She has sweet little curls, but she was my first velvet that I ever got. She was what got me back into Chrissy dolls. I found her in 2013 and I had no idea who she was I knew that she was like because I had a Chrissy when I was little that was probably my mom's or something but that doll was completely messed up but I, I, I guess I just looked up grow hair doll or something after I got her and I discovered her name was velvet and that she was Chrissy's little cousin and all that there's so many Chrissy characters it's crazy but yeah but she's the look around one so she does have a little pull knob there's supposed to be a butterfly back here but of course when i found her the string was sucked into her body and the butterfly was gone so i just put a bead here and of course when i went to take her head off for the first time to reroute her i broke a piece inside her body so her head doesn't turn anymore with the mechanism so but you can pull this And she still kind of looks around. So. That's that. But she's supposed to look around. 
like let me pull this again I'll show you what she's supposed to do the string goes up really 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 far but yeah she's supposed to look around and her head is supposed to do this while her waist is moving so yeah that is more or less the motion that she's supposed to do but because I broke something in there her head doesn't move with that anymore so you kind of have to turn her you have to make her look around manually now but her waist still her waist still does turn and all that so yeah that's her she makes that noise too I always call that the blinking noise because that's the sound the eyes make. But yeah, I've got more do Chrissy dolls, but yeah, way off topic. But anyway, that's this doll done and uh, that's enough of my rambling and projects and all that. Anyhow, thank you guys for watching. More videos to come. Remember to stay true to you.